for the last seven ish videos. We've been working in this lovely little software called Blender, the most comprehensive 3D modeling, animation, and everything else under the sun software that you can use for free. What you may not have noticed is that the Blender logo actually looks like the blades of a blender. I know, I know, it sounds a little weird or it sounds corny, you take your pick. But today I realized we can do something with that. And today, why not make the Blender logo in Blender and make it spin like a blender? Sounds weird, right? Let's get started. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course, a little series of shenanigans that cause me to make more shenanigans and get into more shenanigans in this little app I like to call Blender as I am learning and getting reacquainted with it. So yeah, if you feel the same way I do, feel free to hit that like button right next to the subscribe button and leave a comment down below telling me about some of your favorite aspects of Blender, or at least uh, did you ever notice that the Blender logo looks like the Blender blades of a blender but with all of that out of the way let's get right into it i ended up starting with the actual scene that i wanted to use for this entire video early and by early i mean way back in march when i actually had the motivation to do this particular one but then i got sidetracked then I got sidetracked again, but luckily I was able to take full advantage of the fact that you can put your references inside of your Blender scene by just making a plane and then putting the pictures slash references on the actual plane itself. Super helpful, but something that you really wouldn't have known unless you've been in Blender for as many hours as I have and have been suffering greatly for it. <laughs> but after I finished organizing all of the folders that I really wanted to get together, more specifically the Ahsoka model that I wanted to use to actually show the scale and the size of this, I ended up getting into the base shapes of what we know as the Blender logo. And really it was just a cylinder and another cylinder and another cylinder. More specifically, a circle. One of the best things about Blender is that you can just make a mesh for the cylinder or widen it to whatever size you want. You can shrink it down and or widen it using the scale button, which is S, and then you can make it whatever shape you really want, or at least whatever size of circle that you really want. It didn't take me as long as I expected it to in order to make the entire logo, but you know, it's only six shapes, three circles, and technically three longer circles that you can just make from a cylinder, which I did, and then I just combined the meshes all down and then just made it into a flatter image, which you will see in a little bit. It roughly took me about 40 minutes to do this entire thing. And then once I got everything that I wanted to do, meaning, mainly meaning the shapes in the right line, and then I made a little stage, retextured the stage. All of that was a, roughly about an hour. Then I started to have fun. One of the main things that I really had to do was to get the gaps in between the circles um, in the actual main part of the logo. That was because I wanted, I envisioned it to actually be able to have light shining through it, like an actual stage on a concert or something like that. And I think it came out a lot better than I had even hoped. The worst thing in this entire process was just trying to re-extrude the Blender logo multiple times in order to get the right size. This is why you always make a copy of your work, people. Luckily, I had to copy and then re-copy and then copy again in order to get the right scale settings in order to get the Blender logo to be as thick as I wanted it to. And then I had to recolor it because once I combined all the meshes together, the meshes did not play well with the colors that I made for them. So I had to do five extra things and then I had to go in and uh, go back into the dreaded edit mode and figure all that out. But luckily, I had a pretty good time. Well, mostly. After recoloring and, well, technically reassigning the colors on the Blender logo and then messing around with the remesh tool to figure out what abstract shape I can get Blender to look like, um, I kind of got back into figuring out how to do all this good stuff. It was all fun and games until Ahsoka came into the mix because she kind of broke everything. Not really. She kind of broke most of the plans for everything that I was trying to do. Mainly getting everything to spin. What I mean by that is for the next couple of minutes, as I figure out how to actually position the camera, get everything together, her boots start flying off. <laughs> her boots fly off and then her headdress. Well, specifically her headpiece. There you go. Her headpiece starting to fly off as well. And also her teeth. Um, this is something that you're going to end up dealing with in Blender or at least in any 3D software in the first place. Kind of reminds me of the old Pixar blooper reels that you can probably find on YouTube where a character would be walking and doing something and then all of a sudden the entirety of their hair explodes. Something that I'm definitely going to be talking about in depth in one of my next videos. So please stay tuned for that.
since I've been posing this Ahsoka model for roughly six months at this point, it hasn't really been that big of a challenge to actually get her in the right position and to make everything look natural, mostly, especially to have her tilt her head up and actually look up at the camera. Um, you know, that's the thumbnail for the video because it made sense to me. One thing I did hate, like I said, was the fact that her clothes kept popping in and out when they shouldn't have. So I had to figure out why that was. Spoiler, I didn't figure that out. So what I ended up doing was just going ahead and fixing the expression that I needed to do. Also, don't worry about me breaking her jaw like that. That's, that's very not, uh, that's very much not related to what we're trying to do. But I ended up parenting her camera to her foot and then parenting her actual model to the Blender logo itself, which kind of made sense. But at the same time, I think that is exactly when uh, the entire thing decided to just mess itself up. But I didn't think too hard about that because I was trying to get this lighting situation together. The lighting here was just absolutely phenomenal. I think it's one of my favorites that I've actually set up in the scene this entire time that I actually have been working in Blender the way I have. I think that's mainly because of the fact that the blue lights, well, at least the set of blue lights that I put here came together in such a way that that's exactly what I was thinking when I first put together this entire scene in my head and then decided to actually make it. With all the lights that I actually had for this scene, that let me come back about three more times and actually change up the entire lighting scenario in a way that I wanted to use for a later project. But I still loved how the blue glow from under the logo came out. It's really probably one of the main things that made this entire thing work. Like I said earlier, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Once I finished setting up the overhead camera for the long shots, the two long shots that I had, I decided to change the world light in order to get a purple background for the entire logo once everything was said and done. That made it a lot easier to animate the lights and then have the lights actually show up instead of just having everything in a completely black background. Also, it helped for the animation too because it just looked good. I just kind of got tired of having black backgrounds and decided to add a little bit of extra uh, panache to it. Then after adding all that good panache, I realized, oh, uh, there are parts that are flying that shouldn't be flying. Huh, uh, can I fix that? No, so I just left Ahsoka as she is. I set up another camera too, so I can uh, do a very weird zoom effect that didn't actually work the way I wanted it to, but I kind of didn't care too much at this point. I was already ready to go. Then I decided to do an extra pose. I ended up duplicating Ahsoka's body about three or four times but i really only needed it the first two times one to actually parent her camera to her foot and then another one to have a alternate head pose that way i don't have to worry about messing up the animation style i mean the uh the animation rig after i decided to do all of the testing and renderings i decided to change her head pose a couple of times and on top of that, I decided to change her facial expression too because it kind of didn't come out right when I actually did all the test renders. So off to the shopping block with that one. But with that being said, now it is time to get to rendering or at least time to show you the finished animation. Overall, even with the flaws that are in both of these sets, I kind of liked how all of these came out. It was a nice little test that basically took a day to do. You can actually see her boots flying off and flying back in in each of these frames too which you know i'm like yeah that was fun but still at the end of the day i achieved my goal even though there were still body parts flying around at the end of the day <laughs> so yeah with all that being said thank you all for watching this little video of mine if you enjoyed the video please be sure to check out the rest of the blender discourse course playlist that is on screen right now or at least it should be in a couple of seconds and also leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of the entire animation i still think there's a lot of work that can be done, but for something that was more or less done in about 45 minutes, well, actually about two and a half hours or so, uh, I think it came out pretty good. I'm just glad it, you know, rendered on time and didn't blow up my computer again. Don't worry about that last part. And so, yeah, with all that being said, thank you all for watching and I will check you all later.